I'm firmly convinced of this, that God gave us a lot of wonderful power. God gave us the power to think, to love. will, to choose whether we're going to succeed, whether we're going to fail, but we you all can be a great football coach, a great businessman. I'll show you somebody's had to overcome adversity. You remember one thing, that we need love and understanding most is when we really and truly probably deserve it the least. This you just a had a tremendous example. setback. What are you going to do now? You're going to rally back, or you're going to wallow in some pity. You're going to have adversity in your industry. You're going to go through danger statements. There's not a business and operation day that isn't in it except to help people get what they want. And as people needs change, as society changes, business is going to change. Oh, you're going to hear about the problems. You're going to hear about the difficulties. You're going to hear about everything that's wrong, and the higher up you go in any organization, the more negative things you hear, the less praise you hear. You show me somebody that doesn't have a burning desire to go do something. I'll show you somebody that just wants to go through life day by day, expecting the work, and usually getting the work. If you have somebody with a dream and a hope and an ambition, I'll show you somebody that's positive and somebody that good things happen. I'm sure you have you sitting there saying, what in the world do they have in common with both the football coach? Well, we and gentlemen, we really have an awful lot in common. One thing we have is we have constant problems. I'd love to sit and about the problems we have at the University of Notre Dame, but you're not really interested in those. Most people are interested in the problems we have. The one thing to know is you first, you're going to have problems. don't have in this beautiful environment to realize that God gave us an awful lot of wonderful powers. He gave us the power to love, to think, to create, to imagine, to plan. The greatest power God gave us is the power to choose. We choose whether we're going to act or procrastinate, leave or doubt, pray or curse, help or heal, be happy or sad. We also choose whether we're going to succeed or fail. You're probably saying, well, then why did everybody choose to succeed? The answer is very simple. People get discouraged when they have a little bit of adversity. You show me anybody who's achieved success, I show you somebody's had to get up off ground in order to do it. We have a test and look at people and say, boy, weren't they lucky? Did everything fall in the right place? So and I both know that things don't work that way. Right at this university, we've had some wonderful football coaches in the past. Newt Rock, Frank Lee, the Air Force Legion, Dan Devine, all people won the national championship. Now I'm sure you can go back and look at their lives and study it. You'll find that all of them had to come and see. I have enough, I want to see your ass. I'm not enough. That was not a come on, Pat. Hey, yeah, they changed it. The basic philosophy of any simple business is to help people get what they want. If you want to be successful, just find out what people desire and show them how you can help them get better than anybody else can. The one thing we have to keep in mind is that people's needs change, and consequently, we must change to meet those needs. Take the top 50 businesses in America the last 50 years and compare them with the top 50 businesses today. You'll find there's been a tremendous change. Why? People's needs have changed. Business not always change to accommodate those needs. I know you're sitting there saying, well, little host, what do you know about business? <laughs> like the true story. I went always a little bit, it's true. In 1963, I was an assistant football coach at the College of William & Mary. It was a nine-month-a-year job, which meant three months out of the year I had to get a job in order to support my family. The job I got in 1963, ladies and gentlemen, was supposed to have a reply. Now, I'll tell you, I'll be, I want to tell you something. I ain't never had a tough one. And my wife, she's very supportive of me. She said, you're going to do what? I said, I'm going to sell some of your so she became very negative. She said, you won't sell anything. Well, that's some matter of record. I sold our car, our stereo, our TV, our radio. I sold virtually everything we own, but I've yet to sell a single cemetery plot. But all business is, all life is, is helping people get what they want. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on top, and I've been on bottom, and I'll be both places again. When I was at Arkansas, we beat Oklahoma and the Orange Bowl, and... They put me in the Hall of Fame in a commemorative stamp honoring Lou. Put a picture on stamp. That was impressive. Next year, we had to do away with the stamp after to beat us. Uh, 
people kept spitting on the wrong side of it. You know, I'm going to have the crisis in my life in the next couple months, and you are all set. But I want to say this to you, and I believe it's at the bottom of my heart. I've never had a crisis in my life that didn't make me stronger or make the organization better if we reacted positively to it. We can all grow and benefit from crises because they're going to happen in our life, and adversity is just another way to measure the greatness of an individual. You show me any of these today, or I'll show me a tale over some advice I give you after the example. You tell you get hard to remember the name Jack Harberton. 1973, graduate of Iowa Mater, K State University, came with an 800 yards of swimming the English Channel. You say, what's so great about that? Jack Robertson's a paraplegic. Does not have the use of any legs. I was invited to go to New York to be their head football coach in 1976. Ladies and gentlemen, I turned the job down three different times. I didn't think that's what I wanted to do. I finally said to my wife, family, well, let's go see what it's like. If it doesn't work out, we can always come back to the collegiate athletics. I went out to the New York Jets, hoping that everything worked out, but not a total commitment to it. I got up every morning, and I'm not sure this is what I want to do. I'm not sure this is worth all the hassle. And it's a terrible way to go through life. Get up every day and have to make decisions. And after signing a five-year contract, the New York decided up after eight months one morning and said, this isn't what I want to do, and resigned. Now, nobody will ever understand the embarrassed ridicule that I experienced several years after that. I went to a situation that should have been the happiest in the world. If you ever picked an ideal place to coach, everybody said it had been the New York Jets. I was called upon to go to the University of Minnesota. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have absolutely no desire to go to Minnesota. I've never been in the state before. I don't like the weather. And I noticed that every time I picked up the USA Today, Minnesota was always in blue. And everybody I'd ever met from Minnesota had one here blue. Here. So I really wasn't real. <laughs> now, they had a great guy up, one of the greatest salesmen I've ever seen, a guy named Harvey McKay. I said, hey, you come up to me, this is the best opportunity you could ever have. He said, you can recognize an opportunity. He said, there's potential there. I said, give me an example. He said, do you realize that last year, Nebraska only beat the Well, I was impressed. Nebraska has a program. I didn't know he had 10 touchdowns. With 17 straight games, the average score was 47 to 13. Now, the program went down not because of a coach. The program went down because the whole attitude became, well, we aren't going to win anyway. Eighteen months later, we had the opportunity to go to a bowl game. Now, the program came back not because of a coach. The program came back because of the attitude. Attitude doesn't start at the bottom and work its way up. Attitude starts with you and me. You and I are going to set the tempo for everything that happens in an organization. What I'd want to tell you is this. You're special. I've been around this world a few times. There is a man in this room I look at that I don't see great potential, great talent, and a lot of great. Don't focus on your shortcomings. Don't focus on the things you didn't do well. I want you to think about all the good things that you've done. And I would love to have you get up every morning and say, I'm special. I can do some great things with my life. Yeah, 95% of the people in this world don't believe they have as much talent or ability as other people, and that's a shame. Why don't people believe in themselves? I find that I used to have a very poor self-image. If you find somebody that's negative, constantly complaining, constantly predicting, constantly tearing people down, I'll show you somebody that has a poor self-image and a belief in themselves. I used to think, well, the reason I didn't have a lot of self-confidence was look. Guy introduced me one time. The best thing I can say about the host is he isn't two-faced. Because if he was, that sucker wouldn't be wearing the face he is today. It's, uh... <laughs> but we as a team that does those things and is physical and plays together. Why and this is what this game's all about. It's not a game individual. It's, it's 22. A fake bite scratch it to move a 13-ounce pigskin. A Christie alumni truck. And if you have to be trusted with that football in the kick game, you intercept it, you're carrying it, if you're snapping it, man, if that thing is getting it, throw it against nothing. Okay. Not interested in looking in the back, interested in looking where we've been, more interested in where we're going. Look out, sweat, good Lord, put eyes in front of your head. Goals for the season, of course, national championship. Win a January 1 vote. Top 10 winnable game we'll see. I'm a firm believer in golf. Take a good look at me. You'll notice the following characteristics about Lou Hall. 
I stand five feet ten, weigh 152 pounds, wear glasses, speak with this, have a physical appearance like I've been inflicted with very, very scurvy most of my life. I'm not going to impress anybody. The only reason I stand up here as head football coach at the University of Notre Dame are two reasons. One, I have a good spouse. And two, as I'm very much goal-oriented. <laughs> The only reason I'm a football coach at the University of Notre Dame was I had set some high goals. It all occurred in the year 1966 when I was hired by a young man by the name of Marvin Bash to go coach at the University of South Carolina. My wife was eight months pregnant with our third child. We'd been every cent we in the bank for down payment on the home, and we went to South Carolina with great expectations. A month after there, Marvin Bash resigned to go to the Canadian League. Consequently, I was employed. At age 28, no money bank, unemployed, your wife expecting her third child, that is a rather dismal point in my entire life. I don't think I've ever been any lower in my entire life than I was at that time. My wife has always been very supportive, but I'll always deeply at to her because instead of complaining, she encouraged me. She even bought me a book. As I read about goal setting, he said, if you're bored with life, if you don't have a burning desire to get up and go do things in the morning, he said, the main problem is you don't have any goals. To really be accurate in goal setting, you need to take a piece of paper and pencil. Write down all the goals you wish to achieve. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I got all this from paper. And I started to write down all the things I wish to do. I want to go to the White House for dinner. I want to be up tonight, y'all. I want to see the Pope. I want to go to various continents. I want to win the national championship. I want to coach Notre Dame. I want to be coach of the year. I want to make a hole in one. I want to do a lot of crazy things. Jump out of an airplane, land an aircraft carrier, go on a submarine. And next thing you know, I'm writing down this list. I got 107 of them. And the more I wrote, the more excited I got. And I went to Maury and I said, hey, look at this. 107 of those suckers, and we're going to do every one of them. She said, gee, that's nice. She said, why don't you get a job? <laughs> so we made it 108. And I'm going to tell you, my whole life changed. I've taken over five college situations. William and Mary, NC State, Arkansas, Minnesota, Notre Dame. I've never inherited a winning football team. We've never been able to take that team to a bowl game our second year at latest. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a great football coach and I'm not a very smart individual. But I want to tell you this, the most important thing is getting people to believe in themselves. You get somebody to believe in themselves, they'll set bigger goals. Can you imagine walking up to Sir Edmund after he climbed Mount Everest and say, how'd you get here? And he said, I don't know, went for a walk, and lo and behold, here I am. Things will just happen. You have a goal, you have to believe that it's going to happen, you set a plan, you work for it, and you expect good things to happen. But always aim high. Right I've come to the conclusion that nobody ever did. It's going to make me feel inferior and happy with my face. We were at the beach a couple of years ago, had on a bathing suit, and my wife looked at me and she said, Boy, you are skinny, aren't you? I said, Honey, I'd like to remind you that it was my defects like that that kept me from the better wife. You know, if I was bigger and stronger. Well, I don't think I'd make that same mistake again if presented with the opportunity. But, but it didn't look. Look to have a thing to do with whether you're going to be positive, optimistic, and help people believe in yourself. Then I used to think the reason I didn't believe I could succeed was intelligence. I am not very smart. When I graduated from high school, I ranked 234 in a class of 278. Now, that didn't bother me, but it did upset me when the principal said it was a rather stupid class overall. And the guidance counselor wanted to know if I was going to win a steel mill of the pottery. And I said, I'm going to go to Kent State University. He said, you don't have the academic background to succeed. He said, you'll flunk out. I said, you don't think I'm very smart, do you? And I'll never forget what she said. She said, look, a lot of people don't know what's going on. She said, but you don't suspect anything's going on. And it's, <laughs> and it's true. But ladies and gentlemen, it didn't look, and it didn't intelligent. I want to give you three simple little rules that we've used at every school I've ever coached to raise the self-image of people. The same three rules for I ha have for our children, the same three rules I have for myself, and I guarantee you these three rules are so simple and best to cover. Do what's right, do the best you can, treat others you like to be treated.
Whether you're involved in athletics or whether you're involved in life, we feel there's a very simple formula to enable you to reach your true potential. Do what's right, it's right to be honest. I can't begin to tell you that if we're going to have a society, it's got to be based on honesty. I'm going to tell you this, and everything you do, you've got to be fair to people. Anytime you treat one person different than the other, you are being unfair. And we can't afford to be unfair in our lives, and we can't afford to be unfair in this ball team. I think whenever you have a doubt about the right and proper thing, just say, is this the right thing to do? Whenever you have a disagreement with somebody, ask yourself, is this the right thing to do? See, if we do, we know in our heart the proper thing in life. Then we're going to get poor self image of ourselves in our subconscious mind. The second rule is the very best you probably can all kinds of all ways. Not everybody be all married and all comfort first team, but everybody can be the best they're capable of being. I don't matter actually how many want to win. Everybody wants to win with the bank playing the crowd cheer and the TV lights are on. The question I ask is can you live with losing? Can you live with failure? Can you live with mediocrity? I love what Judge Kay said in 1960. They asked him if he was the vice president of the United States, he's young and a cat. He said, no. He said, once you accept a place when first available, you have a tendency to do it for the rest of your life. Good job, Mick Anderson. Good job. Love the game. Good. Horrible. Keep me attending. I am not going to have to unless somebody's capable of doing When do we feel best about ourselves? I remember when we went the extra mile. When we lay our head on the pillow late at night, tired, worn out, and exhausted. But we know we really paid the supreme price. No matter what the test is, do it to the best of your ability and just as though you're going to put your name on it. Your name is very, very valuable. You get from your father. Maybe it was all he had yeah. But yours is cherry for as long as you live. And this is what she give you. It can always be placed. The black mark on your hand can be erased. Try to be close to exact all said done. You glad him out when you get to yourself. Nobody can overdate ourselves. We do our work. Listen, it's the idiot. Competitiveness that I want to practice. I said, well, you know, I plan on being in all games. You've got to learn to play with pressure, and you've got to put the pressure on yourself here to do. We don't do our children a favor by allowing them to do the bare minimum. See, you can't be a great leader. You cannot be a great coach, you be a great administrator. You cannot be a parent if you don't have a strong in yourself. How can you tell them done? Because if you don't have strong in yourself, you're going to want the approval of people you're dealing with. No, 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 no. So we created the thing we work for most, the thing we strive for. There's no end where you can have you can achieve that if you aren't willing for things to do it. We have a little motto here at the University of Notre Dame. At first, we will be the best, then we'll be first. Everybody asks questions, are you kind of great? That's why we have this beautiful facility. But our athletes will not we really truly want to be very best. But I do know that what's important is to have a total commitment to be the very best we can be in all areas of our life. I've got to have athletes know that I do care about them as people. Notre Dame's here to make it tough, to make it demanding, to make you special. The third one is very simple. Treat other people as you like to be treated, sometimes referred to as go low. I've ever seen a business, a family, or a road to the company's future of people. In my high school banquet, they gave out a most valuable award. That was the most important thing they wanted to me at that time. I went to high school banquet with all the anticipation. They said, well, there isn't more they call and they stood up, and they said the most valued player is Jack Doty. Well, that's rather embarrassing because I was already my feet, so I needed had a standing ovation for Jack Doty with teeth running down my cheek. The speaker was a guy named Finning from Richmond Reserve, and I remember one thing he said. He said, take the opportunity to people you appreciate them before you're late. Unfortunately, we don't do this very, very often. Nice job, Nick. I also say it's a important that you tell your parents you love them and appreciate them. And I really wish you would put it down in the letter again before you go. We've talked about it before. You have no idea the impact that you can have on other people. The letter you write your mom and dad, I read it right now, they'll read it at ten different times. They'll let them read it and put out your heart on it. The best way I know to generate love feeling among a group of people is to treat others as they wait to be treated. You know, best is a teamwork in love and feeling. Teamwork is the foundation for success and excellence. You cannot have excellence unless you have great together. You can have a lot in different directions, and that's not very popular. But if you bring all those folks together for one common cause and a closeness, form a very powerful fit. Oh! Way to go, Winnie. Great I just love my... If we treat other people as we would like to be treated, all of a sudden we find love, feeling, and all together. 
to each other if that should out of the way. Two questions for us. They could really truly want to help. That's what you can do. Your ears dry and love being in the growing positiveness will permeate your organization like nothing you've ever seen. Okay. Good time. And that's in the day how this all happened. These three rules guarantee success whether we're talking about a football team, a family, or an organization. Why do these three rules guarantee success? Because there are three universal questions that everybody asks of one another. Their parent of every child, a child of every parent, a player of every coach, every coach of every player, etc. The three universal questions that everybody asks about one another essentially are, can I trust you? Are you committed? Do you care about me? My wife and I have been married together this summer, 54 years, 27 people. But the only reason we can be married 27 years together is she never trust me, never trust me. If we can't trust one another, there's no way in this world we can be married. Oh, right. oh, right. Alex, but I can have a family I can trust as well. If they can't trust her, I can trust them. Don't have a chance. Anytime you deal with public, you must have a trust the public. You don't have any. The second question everybody asks. Are you committed? Everybody wants to be identified with people that aspire to be the very best. Maybe it's the very best, but certainly to be the very best they possibly can be. And I think our players can hear enough how fortunate they are to be at this school. And I feel that the same as coaches. I think that selling unselfishness, selling winning, selling total team concept, if you preach selling long enough, I'm going to tell you, they're going to believe it. Particularly in our case, it's true. Games that are always the best is when you have group people that absolutely refuse to lose. Every football game you have winner and loser on every play you've led winner and led lose. Life's a personal battle in everything you do. Every play either you win or you lost compared to the guy next to you. I expect to see one great football game, and I expect to see the greatest leadership from our upperclassmen and the most spirit enthusiasm that goes with being at Notre Dame and what's on that head. And the third question everybody asks is probably the most important question. That is, do you care about me? Do you really truly care about me? Or do you care about me because I can run or throw or catch? Do you care about me as a person? You're a great group. I'll tell you this. I appreciate you. I have great respect for you. I also have great options for this ball team. Appreciate them. Come up. Let's get out of here. And you're going to build a successful team, a successful family, or a successful life overnight. I respect you people because of the effort it takes on a daily basis. The poet says, I saw a group of men in my hometown. I saw a group of men turn a building down. With a hee ho and a mighty yell, they swung a beam and the sidewall fell. And I, I said, said the these men skilled, the type you'd hire if you wanted to build. And he laughed and said, why no, indeed. He said, common labor is all I need. Right? I can tear down a day or two what it took a bill 10 years to do. I thought to myself as I walked away, which of these which roles, of these roles am I going to play? Am I the type of company tears down as I make my way foolishly around? Or am I the type trying to build with care in hopes that my community, family, or organization will be glad that I was there? I'd like to leave you with a true story that happened several years ago that illustrates these things. I'd gone to the University of Arkansas. We were getting ready to play Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. We had a very fine football team, had a very successful year. But we had to do three rules, do what's right, do the best you can, treat others you like to be treated. And unfortunately, I was called upon to keep three young men from participating in the football game because they violated a rule we had, and it was a serious rule. They went on to play at the home in the Orange Bowl, and I want to tell you, nobody could change to win the game. We were a 24-point underdog, and... Every time you picked up the newspaper, it talked about the great athlete from Oklahoma. Never once did it talk about good athlete from Arkansas. It said about how bad we were and how bad we would be. And you know what? They talked about we were, didn't have a chance in the world. And our football team believed it. And they started acting that way. I had a meeting two days before the football game in the Four Seasons Hotel. The athletes came in. It was the quietest group you'd ever seen. I never did this before publicly, but I said, you know, this is like any other newspaper. You front page for people who want to read the news. You have the comics for people who can't read. You have the editorial page for people who can't think. But I said, you know, it's really amazing. You're going to roll over and die because you read your book in the newspaper. 
I said, you really have to have a faith and you have to have a belief. If there's one thing in this world I wish I could get across to everybody in this world, <laughs> don't let people tear you down. Don't let people cause you to lose faith and confidence in yourself and in what you're doing. If you believe in yourself, it's so easy to lift other people up. I said, you know, we can win this football game if you really have a strong faith and you have a belief. If you're going to believe that somebody can tear you up and you can't put yourself back together, you're in real problems. Now, I said, I'm going to tell you what, we're going to go around this room and I want you to tell me why we can win. And I suggest to you here today, sometimes you sit down and list all the positive things about you. But I said, I want to know why we can win. Surely there's something that we have going for us. As they started thinking about it, they got up one by one because we weren't leaving that room till they started telling me why we could win. And they got up, I said, I want it to be positive and I want it to be sincere. They said, well, you know, we do have the number one defense in the country statistically, which we did and it was intact. And if we are going to lose, we aren't going to get bad because they aren't going to score a lot. And I want to tell you what, the more they talked about one another and looked at why they could with, you can see the whole two change. They trusted one another. They were brought together. But they made a commitment to one another that evening before they left there. And win, lose, or draw, they were going to be the best they could be. And you could tell that they cared about one another when they started praising one another. Boy, I tell you, it's amazing what happens when you look for something to fear to talk about somebody. And when that football team left that room that day, they were a different team. The new day stopped coming to practice by that time. The next day we had an unbelieving practice. And in our locker room before the game, you could feel the trust, the love, the commitment all together. You could feel it. I didn't know if we'd win, but I knew this. We were going to be outstanding. Because the attitude was there. And I've had people say to me, I knew you'd win that game the way your team came out that locker room door. They said, I've never seen a team that fired up. What would you tell them? And I said, Oklahoma's big, mean, strong, nasty, and aggressive. And I said, the last 11 of out of here are going to have to start. Boy, tore that door down to get out. <laughs> we won the football game 31 to 6. And a tremendous upset, and it wasn't coach. Okay. Prime example okay. of trust, commitment, and luck. So the philosophy is very simple. God gave us a lot of powers, but our power to choose whether we succeed or fail. If we choose to succeed, we've got to realize we're going to have to overcome adversity. The basic philosophy of any business is to help people get what they want. If you help enough people get what they want, you'll get anything in this world you want, which constitutes a goal. A good, healthy self-image is not caused by looks or by intelligence. Good self-image is caused by doing three simple little things. Rule number one, do what's right. Rule number two, do the best you can. Rule number three, treat others you like to be treated. Because those three rules answers the three universal questions everybody asks. Question number one, can I trust you? Question number two, are you committed to excellence? Question number three, do you care about me as a person? As Oliver Wendell Holmes said, what lies behind us and what lies ahead of us is of very little importance when it's compared to what lies within us. If trust, commitment, and love lie within any organization, I promise you it will be successful. We have a most difficult schedule. Somebody said, how do you sleep a schedule like that? I said, like a baby. Wake up every two hours prior. Tremendous, even though they got the timeout. Great game, wasn't it?